Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to read the personal statement that got me into Oxford and I'm going to give you guys tips for writing a killer personal statement for either Oxford or Cambridge. So if you don't know, the Oxbridge personal statement is quite unique in that it's very, very academic. So other universities will probably care about like your extracurricular activities, but for Oxbridge, they don't really care too much about that. And they care more about supercurricular activities. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. In this video, we're gonna uncover it all. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips for writing the personal statement, and then I'll read out mine to better illustrate what I'm talking about. Just so you're aware, I applied to Oxford for chemistry. So mine is a chemistry personal statement. So I think it's gonna be more useful for people who are applying for STEM subjects, but I think if you're a humanities student as well, you'll be able to benefit from the tips that I'm giving you. Even if you're not applying for chemistry, my personal statement is essentially the same formula, but it's just chemistry stuff in mind, but obviously it can be swapped out for any subject. So just like I said earlier, the Oxbridge personal statement has to be very academic. So I would say 80 to 90% academic and 10 to 20% non-academic. So you'll read mine and you'll realize that it's more like an essay. It seems like an academic essay. Um, in other words, they don't really care whether you did like DAV, whether you sing, all that kind of stuff. Those extracurricular activities aren't gonna actually make them want to take you, but it's how you talk about your subject that's gonna make them want to take you. So before writing the personal statement, you need to do supercurricular activities. So supercurricular activities are basically activities concerning your subject, but they go beyond your A-level or you know high school syllabus. So essentially doing wider reading, you know, watching lectures, doing Olympias, doing courses, all of this is supercurricular. Extracurricular is things that don't have anything to do with a subject like sports, singing, dance, stuff like that. So they care more about the things that you do within your subject matter. And they wanna see that you've gone beyond the A-level. So that's gonna really show your passion because it's showing that you actually, apart from the classroom and your homework and all your compulsory work, you actually look at the subject in your spare time, which shows that obviously you have a real interest for it, right? So instead of writing, I'm really passionate about chemistry because I like the way that da -da 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 and all this kind of stuff. It's best to show your passion by talking about what you read and what you found interesting in what you read or watched or whatever. So we'll read the first paragraph of my personal statement so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The key role of chemistry in contributing to medical advancements is one reason why I wish to gain a deeper understanding of the subject. That's basically my introduction. So instead of writing a whole paragraph talking about why I like chemistry and I like it so much because da -da 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 -da, I just have a brief opening sentence but, and then the following sentences are going to actually show my passion. So instead of telling them my passion, I'm showing them my passion. Intrigued by how chemists are involved in drug development, I conducted a research project on the role of natural product synthesis. Reading Atta Nassar et al's Natural Products and Drug Discovery, I discovered that it is the 3D spatial arrangement of atoms in natural products and their chiral centres that determines their effectiveness as drugs. Enantiomers in chiral environments can have drastically different reactivities and combine to target proteins differently, altering the effect of the drug. So I've done this activity and I've shown what I learned from it. So it's showing that I can process this information that's beyond my level specification. You know, so I'm highlighting this is what I got from it. To further explore the effects of chirality, I read Broca et al's The Significance of Chirality in Drug Design and Development and was surprised to learn the extent to which chiral compounds are analysed through methods such as chiral chromatography before being used in drugs. So this is good because I didn't just stop with the research project. What I did was I further explored. So that's what they want to see. They don't just want to see that you read one book. Pick a few topics and then read multiple, not just reading or watch or whatever, multiple things in that topic. So say you started off by reading this book and then that prompted you to read this article and then that prompted you to watch this lecture. 
that shows that you're deeply interested in this topic because you're not just stopping with one thing you're going even further and that's the kind of person that they want they want someone who's always digging deep into something who doesn't just stop who isn't just content with you know one little sentence like no they want to know more and that's really showing that you're actually quite passionate about this subject so i read this i read this um um article and then i talked about what i was surprised to learn so this kind of language i was surprised to learn this i discovered this this is kind of showing wow like i actually am really appreciating what i'm going what i'm reading chiral chromatography can be done by setting up a chiral stationary phrase that will interact more strongly with one enantiomer than the other allowing their separation this is vital as minute details such as spatial arrangement can have a huge impact on pharmaceuticals. So that last sentence is kind of just like wrapping up like what I've learned. I'm kind of saying what I took from all of this. This is the kind of detail that you need to go into. You need to say what, instead of just listing, I read this, I watched this, I did this, say what you learned from that. Like you need to expand on that. Go into a bit of detail, you know, show them that you have actually like done your research. And yeah, this is really showing your passion. So let's move on to my second paragraph so you guys will see again what I'm talking about. To satisfy my growing curiosity in organic chemistry, I read Patrick's A Very Short Introduction to Organic Chemistry and was, and was fascinated, so these keywords, was fascinated by the seemingly endless range of, of potential synthetic compounds and their uses. To see how new compounds can be formed, I watched a lecture from the University of California, Irvine, titled Organometallic Reactions in Organic Synthesis. So I read this book, I was intrigued by the potential compounds, and then I wanted to see how can you even form these new compounds. So do you see what I mean? It's the way that I've linked the different supercurricular activities that I've done, and that's showing that inquisitiveness. I learned that organometallic reagents provide a way of lengthening a carbon chain as they have a nucleophilic carbon. Its slight negative charge is due to being adjacent to an electropositive metal. Seeing the mechanism for the reaction of carbonyl compounds with Grignard reagents was particularly interesting to me as I saw that tertiary alcohols can be formed under acidic conditions. I found it interesting to see how we can vary the final product by adjusting the reaction conditions. So if you're a humanities student and you read like, I don't know, an article, a book on something, then how you make your personal statement personal is by essentially giving your opinion. Right, because with humanity subjects, you can give your opinion, right? Um, but when it comes to STEM, you can't give your opinion because obviously it's like, it's either right or wrong. Like this is just the way it is. But how you can make it more personal is by saying what you found interesting, what what fascinated you, what stood out to you. So instead of saying your opinion, you're saying I found it interesting to see how we can vary the final product. And, you know, seeing the mechanism was particularly interesting to me because da, da, da. instead of saying I love chemistry because I love how mechanisms did it. It's just like, OK, anybody can say that. Right. But the fact that I read this book, then I read this article, then I watched this lecture and I found out this and I really like this. Like this is what's good. They're going to read this is going to be like, wow, OK, she's really interested in this subject. And this is the kind of student that they want. So this is what I mean by very academic, and this is what I mean by it can also seem, it can kind of seem like it's an essay, but this is the way it should be. So this is kind of the structure that I took. I did like three paragraphs and I just talked about three like subject areas. So how I started with writing my personal statement is I identified like three major areas where I had done like some sort of reading or I would want to do some reading. And then, yeah, so mine was like chirality, and then it was like organic chemistry, like mechanisms. And then the third one is like inorganic slash physical, um, like molecular orbitals and stuff. So then I went on to do reading on this and stuff like that so that I can have things to back it up, um, to back up my, my interest in these areas. So that's the structure that I did. So I just wrote like three big paragraphs. You don't have to do it this way, but I think this is a pretty good structure. Um, because yeah, your personal statement just seems very structured. They're reading through it. They can see the passion. They can see what you're interested in. And yeah, so let's read the final paragraph. 
Whilst reading Ball's Elegant Solutions, I was intrigued by the formation of xenon hexafluoroplatinate from platinum hexafluoride and xenon, an element I had learned was especially unreactive. PTF6 is a very strong oxidizing agent and causes XE to, to very briefly form XE plus ions. XE plus is a radical and therefore very unstable, so binds to an F atom covalently. This inspired me to learn more about bonding, and by attending a seminar on superconductors and band gaps, I discovered molecular orbitals. I found it intriguing how we can predict the bond order of a molecule based on the number of electrons in the atomic orbitals. I enjoy learning on a more fundamental level why certain molecules and reactions exist. So yeah, so yeah, if you're applying for chemistry, like I think somebody actually asked me this question. Um, he was like, oh, should I just talk about organic or should I just talk about physical? Like, I think try and mix it in because at the end of the day, you're not applying for organic chemistry or physical chemistry. You're applying for chemistry. So I tried to mix it up. So mine is heavenly organic, but I think that physical bit and the inorganic bit at the bottom is good because it's showing that I'm kind of interested in, in all the different, you know, branches of the subject because chemistry is very varied. So if you're applying for economics and, man and management, for example, make sure your personal statement isn't just economics. Make sure you talk about the management side of it too. Obviously, if you're applying for PPE, politics, philosophy, economics, you might want to do one politics paragraph, one philosophy paragraph, one economics paragraph. So just make sure that you're kind of showing that you're interested in, in all, not all, you can't explore all, but you're interested in more than one area within your subject. And then at the end, I just literally wrote a sentence, which was my extracurricular, just because obviously I'm applying to other universities as well, and they care, but Oxford, Oxford didn't, doesn't care. So I said, I am passionate about learning languages and I'm currently self-learning Japanese, Cantonese, Mandarin and French, as well as running a language learning YouTube channel. I'm excited to study chemistry to satisfy my curiosity about the fundamental processes behind its applications which are prevalent across most areas of our everyday life. So that is my Oxford chemistry personal statement. So now you can get an idea of what I meant by 80 to 90% academic. I would say mine was like 90% academic, if not more. Um, so it's like an essay. Make sure to make it a bit personal. Don't just go on about what you've learned. Like say why you found it interesting and highlight what you found interesting. And just remember to always show not tell so instead of saying you're passionate show that you're passionate um and yeah so if you're thinking about writing the personal statement make sure to do your super curricular activities find books to read you know articles to read and um, lectures to watch um you can even talk about Olymp chemistry olympiad in it um and then maybe talk a bit about one bit in the olympiad that you found a bit interesting and then develop that so it's always about developing don't just list i read this and i like this i i watch this and like don't jump around don't mention too many topics instead hone in on a few so read one thing on this topic and then read a further thing and then watch a further thing so that's showing that you're really delving deep you're going deep which is really showing how passionate you are and it's it's bringing out an inquisitiveness and um, that they want in their students so yes, this is my video on my advice for writing an Oxford personal statement. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. Give this video a big like and also um, share this video if it helped you so it can help other people. I also want to mention that if you don't know, I did math, chemistry and physics A level. I got three A stars and I'm selling my chemistry and physics flashcards, Anki flashcards. Um, I did AQA. So if you want to know more about that, um, you can DM me. Um, my Instagram will be in the description below. And I'll also link the videos where I talked about how I got an A star in each subject in case you're doing them too. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.